Hi, today we're going to be learning about adding integers. First, we need to just have a look at what we actually mean when we talk about adding integers. So when we're adding integers, we are going to be looking at simplifying expressions similar to this one, where you've got something like negative 3 plus positive 4 plus negative 2 plus positive 5. Okay, so here you can see you've got a few different integers. Some of them are positive, some of them are negative, and we've got pluses in between showing that we are adding them. Okay, so now this can look rather confusing if you've never seen anything like this. So we're going to use Dottie to help us to figure out how to do this. Dottie likes to hang around on the number line and walk around and discover new numbers, so she's great for helping us with this. Okay, so here she is on the number line. Let's go and have a look at what she can do for this for us with this expression. So first of all, when we are adding, Dottie will be facing the positive direction. So she's facing the right over here. And when we have a negative integer, she will step backwards. And when we have a positive integer, she will step forwards. Okay, so at the moment, the first one is a negative integer and it is negative three. That means that she is going to take three steps backwards and she starts on zero. So she's gonna take three steps backwards. We go one, two, three steps backwards, and then we've got positive four, that means that she's going to take four steps forwards. We go one, two, three, four. Then uh, we have negative two, so now she's going to take two steps backwards, one, two, and then finally we have positive five, so she takes five steps forwards, one, two, three, four, five, and she ends up on positive four. So if you take this expression, negative three plus positive four plus negative two plus positive five, we will end up with positive four. So all of that is equal to positive four. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap of what was actually happening here. So because Dottie is, because we're adding, Dottie is facing the positive side. Okay, so when we are adding, she will face the positive side, and every time we have a negative integer, she steps backwards, which means that she actually ends up moving towards in the negative direction. Every time we have a positive integer, she steps forwards, which means that she actually ends up moving in the positive direction. Okay, so if you've got we've got a plus because we're adding a positive number then the effect of that is that she will end up moving in the positive direction for that number of steps. If you are adding a negative number, then because she's facing the positive direction and she steps backwards, then the effect is that she moves in the negative direction that number of steps. Okay, so if you look at this over here, I've got a plus over here and a plus over here. And over here, I've got a minus and a minus. So the sign that is inside the brackets over here, when I'm adding, because she is facing the positive direction, the sign that's inside the brackets is what we're going to end up with because when she steps forwards, she ends up going in the positive direction. And when she steps backwards, she ends up going in the negative direction. So when we want, if we want to drop the brackets, if we don't want to have all of these extra brackets and things to get in the way, then we can, and the sign that we'll be left with is going to be the same as the sign that we have inside the brackets. Okay, so I could have taken this question, which was negative three plus positive four plus negative two plus positive five, and I could have dropped all those brackets, and I could have said, okay, now, first of all, this one over here, anytime you've got a a set of brackets in the beginning that has nothing in front of it, it actually has an invisible little zero plus. You can't see it, but it's there. So it is also a plus and then negative three. So we've got a plus and then negative three, which means that just like over here, we had plus and then a negative, we end up having a negative. So it's going to be negative three. Then we've got plus positive 4. Now we're going to keep that sign over there. So it's going to be plus 4 because she ends up moving in the positive direction because she's facing the positive direction and she's stepping forwards. 
Then we're going to have minus 2. Again, she's facing the positive direction, but she's stepping backwards, which means that she ends up moving in the negative direction. And then plus 5, the same sign as we have there. Again, she's stepping forwards in the positive direction. So the signs that we've got over here, that sign is the same as that. That sign is the same as that. That sign is the same as that, and that sign is the same as that. And now we have something that looks far more like a normal kind of question that you're used to that doesn't have all the brackets and all the extra stuff to deal with. Okay, so now we can just simplify that. So we have negative 3 plus 4 gives us 1, minus 2 gives us 2, and plus 5 gives us positive 4. Now, that is something that we are going to learn a little bit more how to actually work those things out a little bit more easily as well. Okay. Now, something else I need to show you is absolute values. So absolute values are something that is useful to know and understand. When you are dealing with integers, an absolute value can be represented like this. You put your number or your integer in between two bar symbols like that. Okay, that means absolute value. So it's an absolute value of negative 2. And what the absolute value is, is the distance of that number from 0. So if I say the distance of negative 2 from 0 is 2. Okay, now the distance of positive 2 from 0 is also 2. They both are the same as each other. It's just that they are on opposite ends of, or are on opposite sides of 0. So this one is 2 less than 0, and this one is 2 more than 0. But they still are both 2. Okay, so now, if we know that, that will help us with some of the stuff that we're going to be doing still. Okay, so absolute values are important, and I will be referring to them quite a lot. So now let's have a look at a few tips that you can use to help you as you are doing these calculations. So first of all, when you are adding things with the same sign, so you have two integers, and they're both positive or they are both negative. So it could be something like this. You have positive 2 plus positive 5, or you could have negative 2 plus negative 5, okay? So in both cases, here they both are positive, and here they both are negative. So the signs are the same for, for each of the different numbers in each uh, situation, or in each example. So over here, if you think about what Dottie would be doing over here, in this example, she is stepping forwards 2, and then she's stepping forwards 5. She's stepping forwards for both, okay? So she's going to be going in the positive direction for both um, numbers over here. So we could say, well, how much is she, step is she stepping forwards altogether? She's stepping forwards 2 and 5, which is, that's the same as stepping forward 7. So it's the same as plus 7, okay? This one over here, uh, she's stepping backwards 2, and then she's stepping backwards 5. So because she's stepping backwards both times, we can say, well, how much is she stepping backwards altogether? And we can say, well, she's stepping backwards 7 times altogether. So what we've actually been able to do here is because the signs are the same, so she's stepping in the same direction the whole time, we can just add these numbers. Okay, so when you are adding with the same sign, you can add the absolute values. So I was able to add the 2 and the 5, and I got 7. Here I was also able to add the 2 and the 5, and I got 7. Even though they were both negative, I was still able to add 2 and 5 and get 7. So I add the absolute values, and then in terms of the sign, I keep the sign the same. Okay, so you can't see that. Um, so that is what we do when we are adding things that have the same sign. Now let's have a look at what you do when you are adding things that have different signs. Okay, so if you've got something like this, negative 2 plus 
positive 5 or positive 2 plus negative 5. Okay. So in both of these, I have now, it's the same numbers as I had here, but it's going to work differently because here, this is negative and that's positive. And in this example, this one is positive and that one is negative. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm, if I look at it and I think about what would Dottie be doing, she's facing the positive direction because I'm adding. And over here, she's stepping backwards, which means that she is moving in the negative direction. And then she is stepping forwards so she's moving in the positive direction. So first she stepped backwards by 2, and then she stepped forwards by 5. So what she did by stepping backwards, she has undone again by stepping forwards. Okay, so altogether she stepped backwards 2, and then she stepped forwards 5. So the first two of her forward steps were, un were basically cancelling out what she did when she stepped back by 2. So over here I can say, well, she effectively ended up only stepping forwards 3. So what I can do is instead of having to actually move Dotty around on the number line, I can say, well, I know that part of this is going to cancel out what is happening over here. And all I need to do is subtract their absolute values. So I can say 5 minus 2 is going to be 3. And then I look and see, well, where, which direction did she step more? Oh, in, in which direction? direction did she step more? She stepped more in the positive direction than in the negative direction, so she will have ended up further in the positive direction. So that's going to be a positive answer over there. This one over here, also I've got a positive and a negative, so she steps forwards and then she steps backwards again. So part of what she is doing is cancelling out what she already did. So again I'm going to subtract. I'm going to say 5 minus 2. I'm going to subtract the a smaller absolute value from the larger absolute value. So 5 minus 2 and that gives me 3. But in this case she stepped further in the negative direction which means that I'm going to have a negative answer. Okay so when we have different signs that we are adding we subtract the absolute values Okay, so over here I was able to say 5 minus 2, and here I was also able to say 5 minus 2. Both times I ended up with 3. Okay, however, my signs, I have to be careful, I need to take the sign of the one that has the larger absolute value, because that is the one that tells me where, which direction she went further. She went further in the positive direction than she went in the negative direction. But in this one, she went further in the negative direction than she went in the positive direction. So my answer needs to have the sign of the, um, the integer that had the higher absolute value. Okay, so that is what you're going to do when you are working out additional subtraction of integers. If they have the same sign, then you add the absolute values and you keep the sign the same. If they have opposite signs, so one is a positive and one is a negative, you're going to subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the, the one that has the higher absolute value. Okay, so now let's have a look at an example where we're going to apply that. So in this example, we have positive 5 plus negative 8. Okay, so positive 5 plus negative 8. First of all, what I can do over here is I can drop my brackets if I want to. Okay, so if I drop my brackets, I can say, well, there's a, an imaginary 0 plus over here, but I'm going to end up keeping the sign of the number that's in the inside the brackets. But now, if I have nothing else that I'm writing over here, I don't need to write that plus. I can just leave the plus out because a, a positive sign is implied if there's nothing written there. So I can just write a plus. If there was anything else in front of it, I would have to write the plus there. And if 
it was a minus, I would have to write the, the sign. But if it's a plus and there's nothing else in front of it, I can just leave that plus out. Okay, so it's 5, and then plus negative 8, that is going to be minus 8, because remember, we keep the sign that's inside the brackets. Okay, so now I've got a positive and a negative. So what I'm going to do is, because they're opposite signs, I'm going to subtract their absolute values. So I have 8, and I have 5, I'm going to subtract them, and that gives me 3. Then, for my sign, I see which one has the higher absolute value. The 8 has the higher absolute value, so I'm going to have a negative because my 8 is negative. So my answer is going to be negative 3. Okay, so that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you some time to do a few examples for yourselves. So we're first going to have, there are four examples altogether. And I'm going to give you a minute each to do each of these examples. So we're going to start off with the first one which is that one over there, and you're going to have a minute to work on that. Okay, so let's have a look at that uh, example. So for A, we've got negative 7 plus positive 2. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to drop my brackets because I don't want to have all that other stuff to deal with. So my negative 7 is going to end up staying negative 7. And then I'm going to have plus 2 over there. Remember, we keep the signs that are inside the brackets because when we're adding... Dottie is facing the positive direction, and so she, when she steps forwards, she moves in the positive direction, and when she steps backwards, she moves in the negative direction. So our signs are going to stay as they are in the brackets over there. Okay, so now negative 7 plus 2, they have opposite signs, so I can just subtract the absolute value. So I have 7 minus 2, and that gives me 5. And then for my sign, I take the sign of the one with the higher absolute value, which is the 7, so it's going to be negative Five. So that's what you should have had for question A. Right, now I'm going to give you a minute to do question B. Okay, you should be done with that, so let's go through that example. So question B, we have positive 6 plus negative 9. Okay, so first of all, positive 6 is going to remain positive, but I don't need to write that plus anymore when I drop the brackets. I can just write 6, and then plus negative 9, the 9 is going to remain negative because Dottie moves in the negative direction when she's stepping backwards, if, she stay, if she's facing the positive direction. So that's going to be minus 9. So I have 6 minus 9. Again, they have opposite signs. One's positive, one's negative. So I'm going to subtract the absolute values. So 9 minus 6 is 3. Now, when we subtract the absolute values, it doesn't matter if the bigger one is written second. I just take the bigger one minus a smaller one. 
okay? And then I'm going to keep the sign of the one with the higher absolute value, which was the 9. So that's negative. So my answer should be negative 3 for that one. Right, now you're going to do question C. Again, you have a minute. Okay, let's go through that example. So in question C, we had negative 2 plus negative 5. Okay, so first of all, the negative 2, when I take the brackets away, is going to remain negative 2. And then the negative 5, when I take the brackets away, is going to remain negative 5 as well. So now in this example, they both have the same sign. They are both negative. So we said that when we are adding things with the same sign, what we're going to do is we are going to keep the sign the same, and we are going to add the absolute value. So I'm going to keep the, it's going to be, my answer will be negative because they're both negative. And I'm going to add the absolute value. So that's adding 2 and 5, and that gives me negative 7. Right, question D. I'm going to give you again one minute. Okay, let's go through that last one. Okay, so in question D, we had negative 1 plus positive 6. Okay, so I'm going to drop those brackets so I don't have to worry about them. So I have negative 1 plus 6, keeping the signs that are inside the brackets because I'm adding. And so when Dottie's facing the positive direction, we end up keeping the signs that are in the brackets because if she steps backwards, then she she's going to be moving in the negative direction. And when she steps forward, she ends up moving in the positive direction. So we keep the signs as they are in the brackets. Now, because the signs are different, I have negative 1 and positive 6, I am going to use the rule for when I'm subtracting or when I'm adding things with different signs, and that is to subtract the absolute values. So that 6 minus 1, I take the bigger one, which is 6 minus 1, and that gives me 5. And then I keep the sign of the one that has the higher absolute value, which in this case is the 6, so it is positive. So my answer is going to be positive. Again, I don't need to write that plus there, because the plus is implied by the fact that there's nothing there. Okay, so I just leave it as plain 5. Okay, so that is just a few very simple examples of adding and subtract or adding integers that have either the same or different signs. Now, we can get onto some more complicated examples like this one that we're going to be working on here. So I'm just going to make this big so you can see it quickly. So we've got negative 2 plus negative 5 plus positive 8, plus positive 4, plus negative 1, plus negative 6, plus positive 9, 
and plus negative 3. Okay, so that is what we're going to be working on now. Now, obviously, this is a lot more complicated than what we have done up till now. We, in the examples we've just been doing, we only had two integers to work with. Here, we have got a lot of integers to work with, and poor Dottie is going to be moving backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards on that number line because there are pluses and minuses and pluses and minuses all over the show. But because of what we know about addition and that addition is commutative in other words we can move things around that are being added and they and it won't change the of the final result so what i can do to make things easier for us and also to make things easier for dotty is to put all of the positives together and to put all of the negatives together and if i do that she can do all of her forward steps first and then she can do all of her backward steps and she won't be having to go backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards like that Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm first going to go and identify all of my positives. So over here I've got a positive, then over here I've got a positive, and over here I've got a positive, and all the rest of them are negatives. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write all of those positive integers first. The reason I can do this is because it is addition, and we know that addition we can use we can use the commutative property. Okay? So over here, I'm going to take the positive 8. I always re recommend putting the positives first because it just makes things easier. So I'm going to take the positive 8 and I'm going to write that down first. Plus, then I've got positive 4. Plus, and then I've got positive 9. So those are all of my positives. Now I'm going to go and write down all the negatives that are left over. So I've got plus, negative 2. Plus, negative 5 plus, I've done those, negative 1, plus negative 6, and then finally plus negative 3. Okay, so those are all of my positives over here, and all of my negatives over here. Now we know, from what we were just learning, that when you are adding integers that have the same sign, what can you do? You can just add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So I'm going to deal with all of my positives together and I'm going to apply that rule. And I'm going to say, because all of these are positive and I'm adding them, I can just add all of their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So this is going to give me 8 plus 4 plus 9. So that's 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 9 is 21. So this is going to be positive 21. So all of that, because I'm adding them, I can just add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. And that gives me positive 21. Plus, over here, I've got negative 2, negative 5, negative 1, negative 6, negative 3. Again, they all have the same sign now because I grouped them together like that. So now, because they're all of the same sign and I'm adding them, I can do the same thing again. I can just add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So now I'm going to say 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 1 is 8, plus 6 is 14, plus 3 is 17. And because they're all negative, I keep the sign the same and it's going to be negative 17. So now this looks a lot more like I, what I had over there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop those brackets so I don't have to worry about them anymore. And that gives me 21 minus 17, which I can now simplify saying, well, now that I know that I've got two things with opposite signs. My rule when I have different signs is to subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the one with the higher absolute value. So in this case, the one with the higher absolute value is the 21, which is positive. So my answer is going to be positive. And I say 21 minus 17, and that gives me four. So my answer is positive four. Okay, so now let's do a quick recap of everything that we were dealing with over here. So first of all, remember when you are given an example like this, what you can do to make it a little bit easier for yourself, when you have lots and lots of integers like this that you are adding together, is you can rearrange them. That's what the commutative property of addition says we can do. So we can rearrange them. And so we can put them with all the positives first and all the negatives last, and then we can, we can simplify the positives first together, and we can simplify the negatives together, and then it becomes much easier to find our final answer. Okay, so now we're going to do another example before I give you a couple to do for yourself. Okay. 
So let's go and do this example over here. I'm just going to put it, make it big quickly so you can see it a bit better. So in this example, we've got positive 5 plus negative 7 plus positive 3 plus positive 4 plus negative 8 plus negative 2 plus positive 1 plus negative 6. Okay. So again, in this example, just like in the previous one, what we're going to do is we're going to first identify all of our positives. Okay, so my first one is positive. That's positive 5 over there. Then I've got positive 3 and positive 4. And then I've got positive 1 over here. Those are all of my positive numbers in this example. So I'm going to write all of those numbers down first. So I've got positive 5 plus positive 3 plus positive 4 plus positive 1. Okay, then I'm going to go and write down all of my negatives, which would be my negative 7 over here, plus negative 8, plus negative 2, and finally plus negative 6. Okay, so I'm going to be dealing with all of my positives first, and then I'm going to be dealing with all of my negatives after that. Okay, so now because all the positives have got the same sign, I can simply add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So I've got 3 plus 5 is 8, plus 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. So this is going to be positive 13. Plus negative 7 and negative 8 and negative 2 and negative 6. Again, the signs are all the same. So because I'm adding them, I can just keep the signs the same or the sign the same and I can just add their absolute value. So I've got 7 plus 8 is 15, plus 2 is 17, plus 6 is 23. So I'm going to have negative 23 over there. Okay, so now I'm going to drop those brackets and I end up with 13. It's positive. I don't need to write the plus because it's implied and then minus 23 remember we keep the sign that's inside the brackets and now they have different signs so what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the absolute values take the bigger one minus the smaller one so it's 23 minus 13 which is 10 and then I keep the sign of the one that has the higher absolute value which in this case is the 23 so that was negative so my answer is going to be negative 10 Okay, so that's what you needed to, needed to do for that example. So now I'm going to give you a couple to do for yourself. Okay, so I'm going to give you time to work on each of these. For the first one, I'm going to give you two minutes.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question A, we had negative 6 plus negative 9, sorry, positive 9, plus negative 3, plus positive 7, plus positive 4, plus negative 1. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is identify all of our positives. So we have positive 9, and we have positive 7, and we have positive 4. And we're going to write all of those first. So positive 9 plus positive 7 plus positive 4. Okay, then I'm going to take all of my negatives and I'm going to write them down next. So I have plus negative 6 plus negative 3 and plus negative 1. So now I'm going to go and simplify all of my positives together and I'm going to simplify all of my negatives together. Okay, so all of my positives, they are 9 and 7 and 4, and because they're all of the same sign and I'm adding them, I can just add their absolute values. So 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 4 is 20. So that's going to give me positive 20. Plus, then I've got negative 6 plus negative 3 plus negative 1. Again, they all have the same sign, so I can just add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So that's going to be negative. 6 plus 3 plus 1 is 10. So that's going to be 20 plus negative 10, or 20 minus 10, which gives me, when I have opposite signs, I just subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the, higher, of the one of the higher absolute value, which in this case is the 20, so it's going to be a positive answer, and 20 minus 10 is just 10. Okay. So that we, that's what you should have had for question A. Now I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on question B. Okay, let's go through that example. So in question B, we had positive 8 plus positive 4 plus negative 6 plus negative 2 plus positive 3 plus negative 9 and plus positive 1. Okay, so in this example, again, I'm going to find all my positives. So I've got positive 8 and positive 4 and positive 3 and positive 1. And I'm going to write all of those down first. So that is positive 8 plus positive 4 plus positive 3 plus positive 1. And then I'm going to put all my negatives after that. So I've got negative 6 and there's a plus there and then plus negative 2 and plus negative 9. 
Okay, so now that I've got all of them written down, I can now go and simplify my positives all together and my negatives all together. Okay, so my positives, because they all have the same sign, I can just add their absolute value. So I've got 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15, plus 1 is 16. So I've got positive 16 plus. Then for my negatives, I do the same thing. They all have negative signs, so I'm going to have a negative um, answer for that part over there. So I've got 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 9 is 17. So I've got positive 16 which just is 16, I'm dropping the brackets here, and then minus 17. And that gives you, when you subtract them, because they have different signs, we're going to subtract the absolute values. So 17 minus 16 is 1, and I keep the sign of the one that is bigger, that has the higher absolute value. So that's negative 1. So for question B, you should have got negative 1. Okay, now we're going to have a look at another example in which you are able to do something extra that will actually make your life a little bit easier. Sometimes you'll have examples that you're able to do this. Okay, so for this example over here, you've got positive 8 plus negative 3 plus negative 7 plus positive 1 plus negative 2 plus negative 8 plus positive 1 plus positive 7. Okay. So now in this example, you'll notice that this is a little bit different from other ones in that I have sometimes some numbers that are recurring. So I've got an 8 here and I've also got an 8 there. Okay, I've also got a 7 here and a 7 there. Now none of the examples we've done up until this point that has happened. When that happens, if you've got um, 2 integers that have the same absolute value but opposite signs, think about what happens with Dottie. She walks the one way and then she steps backwards again and she ends up right back where she started. If she goes eight steps in the positive direction and then eight steps in the negative direction, she's just going to cancel out what she did. So what we can do is we can actually go and cancel those out right in the beginning. So I can say, if I've got a positive 8 and a negative 8, I can just cancel those out. I don't even have to deal with them at all. If I've got over here a negative 7 and a positive 7, I can just cancel them out. I don't have to deal with them at all. Okay, so I can just completely ignore those. So as soon as you see in your question that you've got integers with opposite signs but the same absolute value, go and cancel them out right in the beginning because it's going to make your work a lot less. Now we suddenly have four less integers to worry about. Okay, so now out of the ones that are left over, we can find all of our positives and our negatives. So for my positives, I've got positive one and another positive one over there. So I'm going to write those down, but I'm not going to write any of the ones that I've canceled out down because they're gone. I don't have to worry about them anymore. Okay, so I've got positive one and then another positive one. Okay, then over here I've got plus negative 3 and plus negative 2. So now instead of having 8 integers to worry about, I only have 4 to worry about. So my life is much easier now. So now what I can do is I can go and take my positives and simplify them. And then my negatives and simplify them. And then see what I get, what I get overall. Okay, so for my positives, I've got positive 1 and positive 1. That gives me positive 2. And for my negatives, I've got negative 3 and negative 2. And that gives me negative 5 by adding their absolute values and keeping the sign the same. Okay, so now I can just drop those brackets and I get 2 minus 5. And then I can just simplify that because they have opposite signs. I subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the higher one, which in this case is the minus 5. So it's going to be a negative answer and 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's going to be negative 3 for that example. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple to do for yourself. So for the first example, you're going to have two minutes to work on this.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So for question A, we had negative 6 plus positive 5 plus positive 8 plus negative 2 plus negative 4 plus positive 4 plus negative 5 plus positive 3. So the first thing I'm going to go and do is I'm going to see if there's anything that I can cancel out that I'm not going to have to worry about actually working out. So I look and see, I've got negative 6. Are there any other 6s? No, so I can't cancel that out. I've got positive 5. Are there any other 5s? Yes, here I have a negative 5. Because they have the same absolute value and opposite signs, I can cancel those out. Then I've got positive 8. Have I got any other 8s? No, so I can't do anything with that. Negative 2, there are no other 2s. Negative 4 and positive 4 I can cancel out. And then I've got my positive 3 over there. Okay, so now I've already been able to cancel out four of those integers, which means that I'm not going to have to worry about them anymore. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify all of my positive integers. So I've got positive 8 and I've got positive 3. So I'm going to put those ones first and I'm going to simplify those first and then I'm going to put my negatives after them. So I've got positive 8 plus positive 3 and then negative 6 is left plus negative 2. Okay, so now I'm going to go and simplify my positives together and my negatives together. Like that. Okay, so for my positives, positive 8 plus positive 3, that gives me positive 11. And then negative 6 plus negative 2 gives me negative 8. Okay, so now I can go and simplify that. But first I'm just going to drop the brackets and that gives me 11 minus 8. And then now I can just simplify it and I can say, okay, so I've got opposite signs. So I'm going to subtract the absolute values. 11 minus 8 gives me 3. And I keep the sign of the one of the higher absolute value, which is the 11, which is positive. So it's going to be positive 3. Okay, question B you're going to do next. Again, I'm giving you two minutes to work on this. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question B, we have got negative 2 plus negative 1 plus negative 9 plus positive 1 plus positive 5 plus positive 3 plus negative 9 plus negative 5. Okay, so first let's go and see if there's anything that we can cancel out straight away. So I have got negative 2 
Is there any other two here? No, so I can't cancel that out. I've got negative one. Is there any other one here? Yes, I've got a positive one over there. Now, because they have the same absolute value, but opposite signs, I can cancel those out. Then I've got negative nine. Are there any other, other nines here? Yes. Okay, but look over here. They are both negative. Now, because they're both negative, I can't cancel them out. I can only cancel them out if they have opposite signs. So those have to stay. Then I've already cancelled that one out. Let's go to the five. I've got another five over here. This one's positive. That one is negative. Again, because they have opposite signs, I can cancel these ones out. And then I've got positive three. I can't cancel out. And negative nine, I can't cancel out. Okay, so now we're going to go and identify all of our positive numbers. So I've got negative two, negative nine. Then I've got here positive three and then another negative nine. So I only have one positive number which is the positive three plus then I've got my negatives negative two plus negative nine plus another negative nine okay so over here my positive is just that one which I don't need to do anything with and my negatives are these ones over here which I need to simplify okay so I'm going to get positive three that stays as it is for now plus now I'm going to simplify my negatives. They all have the same sign, so I can just add their absolute values. So two plus nine is 11, plus nine again is 20. And that's going to be negative 20 because those are all negatives. Okay, so now I can just drop my brackets. That gives me three minus 20. Now I'm going to subtract their absolute values. So 20 minus three is 17, and give, keep the sign of the one that has the higher absolute value, which is a 20. So it's going to be minus 17. So that's what you should have got for that example. Okay, so that is what we do when we are working with adding with integers. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.